Hello friends, welcome back to Digitalk. In this video, we will learn about the JMS clustering and specifically we will see how we can make a cluster of cube. Now, now when we talk about a cluster in WebLogic, okay, so cluster is a group of services that we configure to achieve the high availability, right, for uh, uh, load balancing and failover of the services. But when we compare it with the JMS, that it would be a completely different because in JMSs, specifically when we talk about the queues, it is a singleton services. And singleton services, that means we need to process a message only once. We don't need uh, the duplicate messages, okay, to avoid any kind of a double processing. For example, if we have an invoice data that we need to be processed only once. So for that, we use a singleton kind of a services, which is a JMS services. Okay, and if you have some basic idea of JMS and, and maybe if you have gone through the few uh, the initial basic videos that I have posted in my channel on JMS. Okay, so basically the, the queue, let me talk about the queue, it attached to only one JMS service. Okay, you can't attach a queue to multiple JMS services to avoid this kind of a duplicity. Okay, so if we have a singleton service and we need a message in only a single queue, then how we can achieve the clustering in JMS? And I will, I'm going to explain you all about that one, how we can achieve that one. So now what is the basic architecture of JMS is that suppose we have a managed server. Okay, and then in that managed server, uh, we have created a JMS server and we have attached a persistent store to our JMS server. Okay, so now, JMS server is a logical entity and persistent store is a physical entity which is actually used to store your messages at the file system level. Okay, and then we attach our JMS server to manage server. Okay, and then after that we have we create a JMS module because now we need the queues and connection factories to be there, right, to complete the JMS system. And then inside our JMS module we create a sub deployment. So sub deployment is a grouping of other JMS resources. For example, if we are creating the queues, connection factories, topics, then we can group all these together in sub deployment and then we can target at once. Okay. After creating a sub deployment, we will create some more resources inside that one. So now we are looking for the JMS clustering. So I will give an example of queue. So after sub deployment, we have created a queue. Okay. And this queue, we will target to sub deployment and our sub deployment will target to JMS server. Right. So because as I said that queue and this queue is a singleton service, right? So that has to be deployed to only one and only one JMS server. So that means your queue is getting targeted to our sub deployment and sub deployment is targeted to our JMS server, which is targeted to our managed server. Right. So in this architecture, you can see this. It is a singleton service because my JMS server is targeted to manage server and my queue is targeted to JMS server one. Right. So that means you have to attach or it is only possible to attach a JMS server with only one managed server. You can't attach a JMS server to multiple managed servers. Similarly, when you are creating a persistent store, you can attach a persistent store to only one JMS server. You can't attach a persistent store to multiple JMS servers. Okay. And once you have created a queue, then you can able to attach this particular to queue to only one managed server. Right. So now you can understand the dependency. You, know, you can't have a cluster in this uh, JMS kind of a services where you are saying that uh, your queue can, leave, can only be attached to only one JMS server and your one JMS server can only be attached to one managed server. So this is looks like a single kind of a failure. Right. So this is why we call it a singleton services. And to achieve the clustering of this kind of a singleton services, we have a uniform distributed queue. OK, this is the concept for a queue. So if you go for a discussion with the topics and then topic would for topic, you will have a uniform distributed topic, but that would be altogether different. So now here we are talking about only queue. So to achieve this one, we have a uniform distributed queue that we will see in this particular slide. OK, now if I talk about this particular architecture, which I am showing to you on the screen and you want the high availability for this kind of architecture. So probably uh, in a. Uh, why we need that one if suppose that you have uh, uh, this kind of a single single ten services architecture and if your managed server get crash or maybe your queue is not responding due to any issues okay then your completely jms system will will get breakdown right so for that one you may need a parallel architecture similar parallel architecture right there means you will need one more managed server you will need one more jms server one more position store and then you have to create a jms module inside that you will create a sub deployment and then again you will create a queue that means a similar parallel system there has to be in place right 
but this parallel system would be a completely a separate system altogether you can't say this is a cluster because in this architecture you will see that when you are creating that you would have a separate managed servers and then apart from that when you are creating a queue then you will have a different gndi name for both queues right so for example in the first architecture on the first system you have a jndi name with dq1 and in the second you will have a jndi name of dq2 because when your application connecting to your jms system it use a jndi name if you are saying that i have a two different jndi names then it will not able to achieve the jms uh, complete jms system uh, high availability like for failover or for clustering kind of a uh, features okay so what is required in that case as i said no part of uh, this is not part of cluster so no load balancing and failover mechanism because this is all together a different system where you have a uh, two different queues with two different jndi uh, uh, name so it, it this will not form a cluster and you will not able to achieve the load balancing and failover right so to avoid such kind of a situation to to implement the clustering for your singleton services specifically when we talk about queues then a concept come in picture that is called uniform distributed queue right so this is the architecture which is the same as i we saw in the previous screen but what we are doing here is that we have a single queue that we want to target to both jms server right as i said in the previous screen when you are creating two managed servers and two jms servers and then corresponding persistence store then you are creating the corresponding resources like sub deployment and then you and then you are creating your queue okay then the system would not you will not able to achieve the high availability uh, capabilities if you are creating a two different queues right but if you are going for the jms clustering then what is the option if we have a two different queue then what is the option to go for a clustering for that what exactly solution is that instead of creating a queue you have to go for uniform distributed queue right this is again a, a option that you once you will go for the resource configuration in the jms module sub deployment and once you will create click on new okay then you will get get an option to create the uniform distributed queue so instead of creating a queue you have to select a uniform distributed queue and this uniform distributed queue you have you can target to multiple jms services and with the help of this uniform distributed queue you can achieve the clustering concept and how it is i will show you in the next screen so now what i'm saying is that we have the same architecture but instead of queue what you are doing is that you are creating a uniform distributed queue right and for this uniform distributed queue you will have a single gndi name so why i was saying two different system initially in my first slide because we had two dis, uh, two dissimilar systems where we had two uh, G, uh, separate queues with the different gndi names but when we talk about a uniform distributed queue which we can target to multiple jms services servers for that you can assign a single gndi name so your application whenever your application will look for the particular uniform distributed queue it will use the single gndi name of your uniform distributed queue and then it can reach to any of the available jms server which is there in the cluster right so auto generated queue name for each jms server so now because we are targeting our uniform distributed queue to multiple jms servers so it will automatically create a different queue name for each and every jms servers and this is how so here what i have done is that it is this is the similar structure that i have shown you on the first screen where i have two managed servers and then corresponding jms servers and the corresponding persistence stores then there would be a single jms module inside that you will have a sub deployment and then instead of a queue i have created a uniform distributed queue and here suppose the jndi name is udq okay so in that case you can see that on the left and right side of my jms module that it will automatically create two queues for you related with the uniform distributed queue with the name of module name and then jms server name at the rate udq name so whatever the name you will give to udq your uniform distributed queue okay it will be mentioned accordingly that means um, the queue name will be created based on your module name your jms server name and then uniform queue name okay so there is a typo in the screen that uniform distributed queue is udq okay it's, it's not udd that is there's a typo okay so this is how you can achieve the jms clustering so now for example you have a uh, uh, this kind of a cluster where you have a uniform distributed queue so if any client want to connect to any your messaging system so with the help of uh, the clustering feature it can either come to managed server 1 or either come to managed server 2 right after that one if suppose that your managed server 1 get crash you will have your managed server 2 available to process the request 
right so now you have a two uni- one uniform distributed queue and it has automatically created a two dis- uh, two queues which is automatically targeted to jms server 1 and jms server 2 so in case of any problem with your jms server 1 or maybe your jms server 1 uh, distributed queue is not responding right so you will have uh, another queue or you can say another distributed queue available which is targeted to jms server 2 or jms server 2 is available to process the request right so now one important thing that you need to note down here is that jms is always a singleton services okay so that means the messages which is coming to your persistent store would be unique so here in our architecture i have two jms servers with two persistent stores so that means the messages which is coming in jms server 1 okay and the messages those are coming in jms server 2 would be completely different you that is to avoid any kind of a duplicity right so why uh, uh, and, and how we are achieving uh, this uh, high availability is that what i am saying is that if your managed server one get crash or jms server one get crash the clients those are connecting to your jms systems still can send the messages okay that will be processed through the managed server 2 or you can say from jms server 2 where your another queue is available in your udd or ud queue right and 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 when we talk about that we have a different persistent stores and the messages are completely different in two persistent stores so how we can achieve the failover okay so in that case suppose that you have uh, your uh, jms server one get crash okay or managed server one get crash or it is not uh, responding anyhow okay and the messages that you have in the jms server one you want to process it via jms server two right so for that one you have an option we can you can move the messages with the help of console or maybe with the help of wsc scripts you can take all the messages from the jms server 1 persistent store and then you can move the messages to the jms server 2 persistent store so that it can be processed from there so this is how we can achieve the jms clustering and how to move uh, uh messages okay but in the next lecture we will see the demo of this one how uh, that how we can configure this kind of architecture and then how we can move messages from one to different